Hello and welcome to the second cricket fishing video and uh, if you haven't seen the first one make sure you do go and check that one out if you have seen it and you know that I'm one nil up. Oh there's a spoiler and you started <laughs> that very formally with hello and welcome you never really do that. Well this time I thought I would. Okay fair enough but yeah like Luke said this is episode two of cricket fishing if you didn't see the first one don't bother watching it it's not that interesting he wins uh, but uh, the principle or the idea of the whole thing is we start with three rods, although this is a two rod venue, so theoretically we're going to start with three rods. If someone catches a fish, the other person has to bring a rod in, and then if that person then catches one, they get to put the rod back out, and the other person gets to bring, has to bring one of theirs in. And the idea is to wipe out your opponents. So basically, three consecutive fish will mean that someone has to bring in all their rods, and you're left with all three. So hopefully, the uh, venue we've chosen this time will be a better pick than, uh, than last time, because last time was very hard going. We will blame the weather on that one, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, we had. If it happens again, we can't blame the weather because it's extremely mild for mid-November now. To be honest, it's yeah. the car was saying 12, 13 degrees, and nights may get down to about 10. Yeah. So for this so time of year, it's absurd. It's going to be very warm. But today we are here at. We're both doing this for our hands. We are both doing that, aren't we? That's, but that's a bit too bouncery, isn't it? How about that? So today we are here at Pondwood Fisheries and many thanks to Josh for sorting this out for us uh, and allowing us down here. Mm -hmm. And basically we're going to have 24 hours to try and wipe each other out. Starting at 12, so we're going to be fishing 12 today till 12 tomorrow. And the theme is two pints of maggots and a packet of hooks. The very, reason being is we're basically cheesy. both going down the, uh, the naturals approach. There is quite a lot of rules on here or re restriction bait when it comes to bait and stuff. So it's kind of whatever you put out in your say PV bag or a little mix that's pretty much it you can't loose feed you can't use uh, boilies loose feed either as well so it's only on a hook bait so we're quite restricted with the bait application so we're kind of going down the same route with naturals we are yep but um, as always there's uh, a couple of tricks up my sleeve so I'll be doing things slightly different to what Joe is and uh, hopefully that'll be the edge that wins it and gets me 2 nil in the lead does tricks mean cheating not cheating at all Like I was saying that the cats are still active. <laughs> See? The bailiff said they weren't. So for night fishing you have to pre-book a peg or a couple of pegs. So obviously we've booked out these two, which is pegs 10 and 11. Now we have got a bit more scope to move around today, but there's a few people booked on tomorrow, so we're probably just going to stay put in these swims and probably from a match perspective that's probably the most fair option. I think so. But we do have to do the draw we do so Sigma well, oh hang on according to the comment section i'm the better tosser bigger tosser you are something about a tosser quite a large tosser so this time <laughs> i'll let you call so if you're correct so sigma side up sigma side down what are you call in i'm going sigma side down that was the worst toss sigma side up okay so i'm right so i get to choose a swim ah it's really hard actually because we've seen fish down here Mm -hmm. But it's a and bit more hemmed in. <laughs> I hope I don't regret it. I'm going to go peg 10 to the left. So okay. I'll this one. Should we say 12 o'clock start? It gives us an hour. Yeah, 12 o'clock start. All right, get in your swim. Go on. I already am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in mine. They're <laughs> very small. <laughs> Well, it's just a touch over half an hour until rods out and my tactics haven't changed since the previous cricket fishing with myself and Luke. So I'm going for a solid bag method, three ounce lead with a Gemini tidy stem through to a really supple, supple braid, about four inches in length to a size six, I believe, curve shank, a micro ring swivel on a slip D setup. And I've got a single grain of pop-up corner. So it adds a bit of buoyancy. That should just waft slightly above the uh, hook like so. So it's nice and small baits because it's going into a solid bag. But I'm going to add a little bunch of live maggots. So I'm just going to use a little uh, sewing needle and just thread on. Be careful not to burst them too much. Obviously, it's going to pierce them to an extent, but I don't want them sort of pissing everywhere. <laughs> because obviously it's going to melt the bag. So I'm only going to go probably about six or seven onto there. And I'm just bait flossing this on and then tying it down. So I've got a little bit of movement on the hook bait because I'm also going to be putting in 
naturals in my solid bag. Now, as we mentioned at the very start of the video, there are a few restrictions when it comes to bait and bait application on here, but at the moment you can still use naturals within reason. So within a, a PVA bag or mesh bag or a solid bag. So I'm going down the solid bag route. I'm going to use fairly, oh, that one's burst. I'm going to take that one off. Fairly large solid bags because that's the way you can put bait out. I want to get a nice, good mouthful of bait out there, a bit of attraction. So that's probably going to do just sort of four or five uh, whites and three or four reds. That's all I'm going to use. Thread that onto the bait floss. It's a tricky bit. Like so. There we are. So it's now on the bait floss. Excuse the plane. We're going to have to put up with them today on this trip thread them down to the hook bait like so and then just tie some real simple overhand loops, uh, overhand knots. Tie them in place. Now of course these have leaked ever so slightly which is why I've got a little bag of stick mix to my right because although I'm not really using the stick mix, I do need to make the stuff that's going in my bag as dry as possible. Tie that down nice and tight several times. We just lost a maggot, no biggie. And trim that off. Careful not to cut any maggots or the rest of the floss. There we go. So there's the hook bait done. Little grain of single corn with a bunch of maggots wriggling on top. So that should lay flat on the bottom with the uh, piece of corn, giving it a bit of separation from the hook so I shouldn't have any issues with masking the hook and a nice bit of attraction there. So I'm just gonna stick that down in this stick mix so that the little bit of liquid that has come out of those maggots gets soaked up before I put it in the bag. Now in the bag, again, I'm just gonna be using naturals and a little bit of pellet. You can use pellet on here, uh, just not super oily stuff. So just really simple quite wide bags. I'm going to be putting the baits out probably with the spoon again so for those of you that don't like the use of baiting spoons I'm afraid you're going to have to get used to it because both myself and Luke are going to be using them. So a little bed of them in the bottom there like so. Now I want to get my hook bait which should be nice and dry now and lower that in like so. Making sure that it all sits nicely in there. So I'm going to put the hook bait slightly to one side, if I can. Such a fiddly bit. Laying the hook bait to the side, lowering the hook next to it, like so. More fiddly than I expected this bit. <laughs> Always a joy on camera. Like so. Now, because I don't want my hook to get masked by any maggots or anything, let's check that's all good in there. Yep, I'm just going to put a bit more pellet on top of that just to cover the hook point and make sure that when I put the maggots in and casters, I'm not getting my hook point covered. So, there we are, that's coming out nicely. A bit more pellet to hold that in place. There we go, so it's nicely covered. Now a handful of maggots, these have got lots of powder on them again to keep them as dry as possible. And because I'm not casting this, I don't need to get the bag uber tight like you would if you were uh, trying to hit some distance. So I don't need to really squash these maggots down, but a nice good handful of them in there. Some casters as well, I've got these a bit more, just a little bit of stick mix on these as well to dry them right out. So I can put them in without melting the bag or anything bursting. There we are. And because, like I said, I'm not casting, I can put the lead there right in the middle. Slightly to the side, actually, like so. And because I don't want to burst any of those maggots on the top, another layer of pellet, just to close that off. And then push that down. So quite a cumbersome big bag, but like I said, I'm not casting. That's going out in the spoon, getting lowered down. and should do the business. So it's nothing neat about that. Get my tape. I 
lick and stick. One, two, three, four. Again, just for uh, personal preference. There we go. Simple, solid bag, full of a bit of pellet, but a lot of uh, maggots, which obviously can add a lot of attraction, a bit of movement to the swim, and then casters, which is something that's going to stay put. I'm not sure exactly what the bottom of the lake is like here, but with all the trees around, I would guess it's quite uh, leafy and silty. But type another one of those and I'm good to go. We now have 28 minutes till uh, Rod's out. So I'll hand over to Luke now and he'll talk you through what he's using for this session. Well, if you are still awake after Jerry's monologue and you want to see a few more tactics, then I will talk you through mine. But don't worry, it will be a very quick one. And uh, we'll go a little bit more into depth later in the video if it actually works. But very simple setup. Uh, I'm just using one of the Gemini fluorocarbon leaders. That's going to keep everything nice and pinned down. Quite a light lead because it's, I imagine it's quite silty out there. It's only a small venue, but there's a lot of trees around it and there's a lot of leaf litter on the banks and on the surface of the water. So I'm imagining that, like I say, that it will be quite silty. And then I've got probably about a six to eight inch rig and I've got a little cork ball filled with maggots. So it looks really appealing. Little split shot just to hold it down uh I ran out of putty so I thought I'd go old school and then all I'm doing on top of that is putting out just a little mesh bag of a mixture of live and dead maggots so the reason for putting dead out is because obviously they won't go anywhere into the silt however if it was just live there's a good chance that they've all wriggle get themselves deep in the silt and then that's the attractant gone because like Joe said we can't put loose feed out so we're relying on whatever's in this little mesh bag. So if I've got some dead ones which are going to be coating the surface of the silt and some live ones which are going to get carp hunting about on top of this concoction of uh, maggots on the cork ball then hopefully that's what's going to do a bite. But I am really really running behind because it's taken me about 15 minutes to make this this little hook bait up. So like I say I will talk to you in a little bit about how I've actually done this but for now I'm just going to focus on making the second hook bait up and getting the rods out because I've got about 10 minutes to go. Okay so this is my swim for the uh, 24 hours we've only got a few minutes left to go and it's quite an intimate lake it's only about an acre in size so it's very small and uh, I've already seen some bubbles come up just off that tree which is straight in front of me and we've had a few fish show out in midwater over there about where those geese are so uh, maybe a bit further than the geese so I'm glad I chose this swim because it gives me the option to fish left margin, bit of open water and the island and let's uh, see so yeah, I'm feeling quite confident obviously Luke's just to my right so we're very very close and he's got a little less water but it does look nice we've seen some fish show there as well so it's anyone's game really but I'm, I'm confident in where I've got spots and yes as I mentioned gonna be using the pole so get your hate comments in now if you like such a small venue but uh, as I said in the last one first bite is crucial so if we can uh, get first bites without scaring anything off, then uh, why wouldn't you use something that can aid in that? So we have three minutes, Luke. I don't even care if you're ready or not. How are you looking? You're nowhere near ready. We did agree on 12 though. Oh, there we are, you're in the shade. So whether you're ready or not, I'm putting mine out. That does look good. I'm sure you've seen Luke's hook baits by now. It's a little bit worried, but we'll see. Any second now, the timer starts. Luke isn't ready, but I'm not going to be a gentleman and wait for him to be ready. We agreed on 12, that's plenty of time. So, uh, spoon ready. No loose feed in there, as I said, can't loose feed, so it's just what's in this bag. I'm going to pop that in there. Wait for this to tick over. This last minute's taking forever. There we are, 12 o'clock. 24 hours starts now. Okay, 
so I don't know what's gone on today, but um, I just haven't got my act together really. It's taken ages to do everything, and it's now about half 12, so Joe's rods have been out for a good half hour, and uh, I'm only just getting my first one out. But this is literally all I'm using, so like I just talked you through, I've got the, uh, the cork ball with all the maggots stuck to it, and then just a mesh PVA bag of live and dead maggots. As you can see, nothing else in the scoop, because we're not allowed anything else, so I'm just gonna lower that in. And, uh, and get this first rod out. So what I'm gonna do with my left rod, has been the odd fish showing probably about three quarters of the way across. So I'm not going tight to, there's like a little peninsula that, that comes out, which I'm not going tight to because I'm not sure how deep it is, but like I said, I've seen fish at about two thirds to three quarters of, of the way across. So that's where this one's going. And then my right one, I've got um, kind of quite a nice margin along the edge, so I might even go and take a landing net pole round and just see how deep that margin is as to whether it's worth having one in there or, or worth having one a little bit further off it. So let's move that left a little bit. That looks about like where I've been seeing the odd one. Let's pull that a bit tighter. Just drop that. <laughs> I think it's about two or three foot if it was very shallow, but it's, um, from the sounds of it, it's quite shallow all over. And at the end of the day, if there's fish there, it doesn't matter how deep it is. It's, if they're there, then there's a chance they feed. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a little poke in front of this tree and just see if there's any depth to it whatsoever. See if it's worth poling across. Ooh. It's 100% worth poling across. I don't know if you can hear that on the mic. It's very gravelly down there. Ooh, pokey, pokey, poke, poke. And then, oh, I on the edge. Yep, that tastes, that feels like water. Ooh, a tree root, who'd have thought? Yep, yeah, just did a bit of tree root. Yep, 100%. It's probably only about three foot, but nice and clear. Oh, is it a couple of feet deep? Who'd have thought? Oh, nice. Well, if I'm honest, this one really does feel like my banker spot. That felt really nice over there, so it wouldn't surprise me if this is the. Um, Spot, the spot that does the bites for me, but let's, uh, let's get this rod over. I'm hoping I've got enough pole sections, because that could be an issue. Well, what an utter manic first hour of a match this has been. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the, the rods are out and uh, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling quietly confident. Yeah, well, watching you find that spot over there has made me think I should really do a bit more scouting of the swim rather than just willy-nilly dropping <laughs> drop uh, solids wherever. Although I know that the solid bags are going to present in on top of the silt and the leaves and that. I wasn't really getting any drop. I know they're quite airy bags with maggots in, mm. so you're going to get quite a slow drop, but it was almost non-existent. So I think I'm going to have a little lead about. I've got a spare rod I'm just going to use as a lead. Have a little plumb about, see if I can find anywhere that's a bit cleaner. So technically, if, um, if I get the first fish, does that mean that you'd have to bring one of them rods in to use your leading rod? Well, it's not a fishing rod. <laughs> I don't think it's gaining anything from casting that lead around. If anything, it's detrimental. All right. But uh, just, yeah, I think... Uh, just try and... I think, uh, although we've seen the fish out there, <coughs> it's not really been prolific shows. It's been like the odd show no, every 20 then, minutes. I suppose by the time we turned up, it was kind of 10-ish, so it's not the best time to see fish. And there has been a few shows throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So I think coming into the evening, I think I think a lot of it is going to be evening activity, yeah. evening overnight. Um, but yeah, I mean... 
finding that little spot along there. I'm kind of I'm glad I walked around there and just had a little little poke about yeah. it. It's like I was saying, it's it's the sort of lake that it is going to be very silty. So by finding that little little bit of gravel, it could make all the difference. And mm -hmm. a little bit of gravel in a silty lake generally will kind of arouse really suspicion. To, yeah, if they're if they're mooching around with just little bits of bait, <coughs> some of this bright and obvious like your hook baits are. Yeah, wriggling around. I mean, there's not a carp that swims in this lake. I don't think they would ignore that. No, exactly. So, and, uh, and if that is one of the areas that they they use. There's every chance of obviously a pick mm -hmm. up from there. Now with this venue it's quite interesting as well because you can fish from the island. There's one bloke mm -hmm. over there at the moment, but I think that's a swim directly opposite. So I have a feeling just off that swim it's going to be quite firm because people often jerk their bait in mm -hmm. at the end of a session that gets cleared up by the carp. So when I have a lead about, I think that's going to be my first port of call. If that is clear, then I'll just move that right hand rod across to a clear patch. Left one may keep it roaming. I don't know, but as the solid bags, I think I need to do them sort of every hour or two just keep them fresh yeah yeah it's probably well it's that kind of match style isn't it it's little and often yeah. keep rebaiting keep kind of getting bait out there and and i guess it's because we can't put the loose feed out it's taking advantage of what you can do yeah so, it's kind of it's, it's actually put me out my comfort zone a bit not being I, able to pre-bait or, or yeah. find little spots putting a bit in the margin just putting out your rods and where they are is the only place to bait it's yeah. it's new yeah. to me so it's interesting um just not sure adapting, I'm, I'm keen on it because I like to put a bit more bait in, especially as it hasn't got really cold yet. This is a perfect time to feed fish up a bit. It is, yeah, <laughs> especially as we're using maggots as well that have yeah. gone. Um, I think that's, again, part of the reason that I've done what I have in terms of the dead maggots because I know there's going to be something around the hook bait unless the hook bait's crawled off. <laughs> but, uh, again, like using a lot of maggots as a hook bait, it means that even if they're getting pecked away, I don't know what the silvers are like in here, but if they are getting pecked away by using a lot, there should still be some on there by the time a carp comes across it. Yeah. So. And if mine get pecked off, there's still going to be you got your corn. a single corn on there that you can't get rid of, so I'm still fishing. But uh, yeah, until you get that first bite on a new venue as well, it's always been like, am I doing something right? Am I fishing completely yeah. wrong? But an acre in size, good head of fish in here you'd like to hope that we'll come across a few it is a catfish and carp lake mm. in terms of the cricket fishing do catfish count well bream didn't count on the first one That's that wasn't the target species uh, all right well, it's carpology it's, carpology. it's not catfishology so <laughs> only carp count. Well, as soon as it's going to be clutching at strawsology but uh, <laughs> we'll see how it goes it's anyway, only been an hour <laughs> i'm gonna get my other rod out and uh, not fish with it just Hang lead on. about with just a lead <laughs> By the way, the whole time we were filming, there was a money spider making a web against your head in the bivvy. So we are just talking to the bailiff in Luke's swim about where there's uh, potential gravel, bits of gravel, like Luke's found one on his right-hand spot. And I was just about to have a lead around to find some spots. He was saying that there's gravel around the edges and around the island just off the point of the island which is pretty much where i put this one earlier i think this was in the silt but it's probably not far off and as we were talking it's just absolutely belted off so if i get this in which is very important that means that luke's technically down although he's still his two rods out he's down to two on the challenge come on yes bring in that theoretical third rod please luke so I've just got the fish sulking down in the net there, I've unhooked it, ready to put the rod back out. But as there's been a bit of disturbance now, I thought we'd just have a little cast about, see if I can find the um, gravelier area. See, next to no drop there, so I don't think it's very deep. And it feels fairly soft, but not sinking in, it's sort of skimming across the top, which presenting a solid bag, clearly, has done the job because uh, I had zero drop on that one out in the pole. But it's obviously presented all right. I'm just going to go a little bit more to the left of that, a little bit further. I've got a big uh, four ounce little gripper lead on there. That either was a drop or I hit a fish on the way down. Oh, there's the gravel. I don't know if you can quite see that skipping along. So, not far off where I just had that fish, nice and clean. So, if I know I go about a normal 12 foot rod length or just over off that island I'm on the gravel I just have one more cast just to double make sure
yeah, shallow, but I'm getting a drop. And look at that, nice and clean, just skipping across. Cool. So now I know that one's going straight back out on the, that spot because it's worked. But uh, those solid bags with maggots and casters are a bit of a fast, so I'm gonna go get sorted. So they are, same again, it's actually a bit neater, they're still huge, but lead one side, hook bait the other. And I've just, when I was making the bag, I put the hook through the bag, so it's, uh, it's actually free out here. There's no way of that getting caught on any of the maggots inside. My hook bait's pinched inside, but nice and neat. A little bit of stick mix just to dry out the spoon each time, because I don't want this melting in the spoon, but we're good to go. Now we found that uh, harder spot out there, that's where this is going. That's all zeroed, so I'll give that to you. Okay. Thank you. Slip this net out and see how big he is. Right, if I lift him then. That's showing 11 pound six, yeah? Yeah. 11 six. Just a double like I thought. Nice. So, technically you're holding biggest fish now as well <laughs> as one in the lead. Well, there we go. Fish number one for the match, one for me. Maybe be the prettiest or the biggest, but what it does mean is that I'm still on three rods and Luke's down to two. Although it means he's still fishing physically with the same number of rods, he's down to uh, two from his theoretical three, if that makes sense. But to keep this lead going, I need to catch more, because one fish for Luke means it completely reverses down to me, down to two, and him on three. Well, I've just had a walk around onto the island, which is pretty much where I'm fishing to. This tree to my left, which you might just about to see, is where I'm fishing just off of by about a rod length, and there's actually bubbles coming up right now. So uh, whether that's fish, I don't know. It doesn't look like fish, but there's no bubbles anywhere else, and that's exactly where my bag is. So it could just be the pellets breaking down and things. But uh, I just want to have a little let around, see what the bottom's like around here. And I'm glad I didn't fish too tight to the island, because it is very shallow for the first couple of feet. And even that, lead's going in now already on the bottom. So it's only about a foot, foot and a half there, but it is solid. So if the fish get in tight, it's very clean around there. And then it just goes not a lot deeper out there, but into the silt. You, barely, you don't even get a drop even this close in. It's just straight into uh, what feels like, I don't know, soup or custard. Some bubbles just came up off that spot again. So uh, I'm just gonna flick it under this tree. Mm, a bit deeper. Again, silty. If the majority of the lake is silt, then the fish are going to be used to feeding in it, so I'm not too worried. But if I can find slightly clearer areas, then obviously I'm going to go for it. See, that's already on the bottom. There's virtually no drop. And it's, yeah, it's just silt. Hmm. This hasn't really enlightened me too much. It's going to cast a bit further out. That was a fish behind me. Again, no drop. Smoother silt. So to be honest, what I'm doing with that right hand rod that's coming over to the island, I think I'm just going to stick with. I can't find any clearer spots. I found the clearer spot on the left rod, which is the one which is sticking out just out here. I'm not going to have a cast around some fish in there as well. But uh, I'm going to come back round, have a little fill down my left margin, see if I can find anywhere along there. If not, it's going to stick with fishing in the silt. So it's just gone three o'clock and it's been quite a while actually since I've had that fish. No more action on any of our rods other than the odd beat really for uh, Luke. But I'm going to bring in the right hand rod, which I've not redone since I got it, so that's been out a good three hours now. And I'm going to move it across to fairly close to where my left hand rod is. So the left hand rod is currently on the gravelly bit that I found. I'm going to move the right rod and put it a bit further to where I had that first bite, which is a bit more silty. So they're both same sort of range to the left of the swim and uh, maybe pick up something there. I have just seen some bubbles come up and a odd little sign of fish out there, but this area just looks devoid of any kind of uh, action or any kind of fish. So I think putting two out there is going to uh, stand me in better stead because we've seen a few more fish out there. It might be slightly deeper water as well. And going into the evening, I feel like the shallower edges of the island probably isn't the best bet to be, place to be. And the margin, again, I had a little let around in the margin, it's just all silty. So there's not really anywhere specific I'm gonna aim for, other than keeping that one rod on the gravelly patch out there. 
everywhere else is gonna be silty. But the way I'm presenting my hook baits is uh, nice and clean. I just knocked up another one, probably the neatest one so far. So uh, what I'm doing now is just putting the hook bait, uh, the hooks are sticking out of the bag so we can't catch on any maggots in there. Maggots and casters, good handful of uh, pellet in there as well. And that's just sitting on top of the silt, no problems. But uh, with solid bags, it's an easy one to bring in, put out another one with a uh, fairly minimal fuss. And using the spoon, I'm not disturbing the swim. So let's bring in that right hand rod and stick it out over there. So Joe's just obviously put his rods back out and uh, I'm getting myself prepped as well to, to redo mine just before dark. He brought one of his rods in and it had no maggots left on it as well. So when I'm using what I am, which is a cork ball with maggots stuck to it, if I've got no maggots left, I've got no attraction. So kind of all my eggs are in one basket and I guess I'm going for a quick bite really more than anything. And well, they've been out a few hours, hasn't been a quick bite. So kind of getting a little bit tetchy that there might not be any maggots left, especially on my right hand rod, which I put on that gravel patch because uh, there was a few little knocks and things like that. I could, like the line was pinging out, the rod was pinging at the tip a little bit. So I think there are some silver fish in here, which are probably going at the maggots. So I don't want to be fishing with just a cork ball overnight. So I'm just going to show you quickly the, the rig itself. It's pretty, pretty simple in terms of the kind of rig presentation. It is a knotless knot with a kicker, that's it and then a little cork ball just on the hair. And then the easiest, well, I say the easiest way, the easiest way to do what I'm doing is if you just poke a bait and needle into the cork ball, and then that gives you something obviously to hold, hold the actual cork ball with so you don't end up with super glue all over your hands. And then I'm just using a Gorilla Glue gel, which I'm then coating the cork ball in and kind of building up layers of maggots as I go. So you want quite a fine layer so it almost goes a little bit tacky before you start putting the maggots on. A fine layer like that. And then the easiest way to stick them is basically with the, the widest point of the maggot. Um, I guess it's its head. I don't know maggot anatomy. But you can kind of hold it on and then you just got to hold each one for a few seconds. The glue's not quite tacky enough at the moment, so he's probably going to drop off. Yep, but that, <laughs> that's basically the idea. Just hold each one for a couple of seconds, and then once the glue is tacky, it ends up holding place. Now, I've made up a couple of rigs already and got the maggots all stuck on there. So I've got a couple just hanging up here. Just take that off. And then you can see, once you've stuck them all, it ends up on a nice little ball like that. And then, obviously, using super glue, it is going to have a certain smell to it. So the thing I've been doing to combat that is using some of this little vapour spray from uh, Richworth and it's like a fishy sort of flavour and then all you do just a few sprays of that. Or you is, could just use floss. Or you could just use floss and to be honest if I realised how much of a bull lake it was doing this I probably would have gone down the floss route but I'm sticking by it and uh, yeah cheers for that Joe from behind the bivvy. Sticking by what I've done and hopefully the uh, perseverance will pay off. If it doesn't, if I wake up to uh, no maggots left on the cork balls at all and no fish, then I'm going to put a couple of wafters out because that's my fail safe. So I'm going to bring the right one in first because this is the one I've had a few little knocks on and I've got no maggots left. <laughs> uh, or split shot. So. I've been fishing an eight-inch sig. Hmm. I mean, I've got one solitary shell of a maggot. <sighs> right. Well, I'm going to put out what I've done for the next hour, and uh, see how it goes. But I might be using wafters overnight. I think. <laughs> so, for the sake of humour in the video, Joey wants me to bring this one in as well because there's probably going to be no maggots on this one either. So let's see. Let's all have a laugh. <laughs> Well, 
a few shells <laughs> getting off maggots. I don't think, in fairness, I don't think it's the fact that the maggots were falling off. I think they're just being pecked off. Are you using PVA glue? No, I'm not using PVA glue. Have you checked? It's Gorilla Glue. Is it Gorilla Glue PVA? <sighs> no, it's, it, no, no, it's not. I can, Your no. head is gone. My head's not gone. It's back to the drawing board slightly, that's all I'm saying. And you just prepped two more of exactly the same. Yeah, I'm going to try and get a quick bite. <laughs> and, uh, I will be changing my tactics overnight, I think. Because I can't take 15 minutes, 20 minutes to put maggots on that are going to fall off. Well, I'm still pretty convinced that that's the right spot. Um, not so convinced on the tactics at the moment. So I could have been sitting out there for near enough three hours with just an unfavoured cork ball as my hook bait. And uh, when it's only hook baits that you've got to rely on, <laughs> you can probably see the camera shaking. That's because Joe's laughing hysterically behind it. <laughs> so if I'm honest, it was a little bit pointless putting, <laughs> putting these two out because after bringing those in with no, uh, no maggots on whatsoever, I'm, uh, I'm not going to be doing that again. So these are literally going out for about half hour. We'll have to make a couple of rigs and um, get a couple of wafters on for the night. <laughs> live and learn, Luke, don't we? I seem to be living and learning on every session we're doing together. Well, it's just gone 20 past four and the light really is dropping. Luke's just redone his rods. I'd done mine probably half an hour ago, but some fish have just started showing out of midwater. I'm taking liberties a bit. There's no one on the lake, so I've just put my rods just the other side of the tree in my swim. <laughs> so technically another swim, but Luke's let me do it. There's a lot of fish showing. So I'm just going to waz one out to where they have been. About there. And see if I can get something before it gets completely dark. It's actually the first brew of the day. Light's just gone. But uh, I'm just redoing one of my rods for the evening, fresh bag. Still using maggots and casters and pellet in the bag, but I'm doing away with um, maggots on the hook because, as you saw from Luke's rather frustrating uh, events with his hook baits, he came in with no maggots, which is such a shame for him. Um, oh, that's going to take another roll. And, uh, to be fair, the maggots on mine have also come off. However, the saving grace is I'm using solid bags with single grain pop of corn as well. So even with the maggots gone, I still had a presented hook bait there. And I've just stuck with the single grain of corn, but taken the maggots off. So as I said, it's, it's just got completely dark now. So everything's under head torch light, despite the fact it's not even five o'clock. Um, and rather conveniently, I'm redoing this rod now because I just had fish number two. So, uh, Luke, you were just redoing your rods, weren't you? You put one back out, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, stop there then, mate. All right, I'm gonna get this back out. Now, I'm not bothering with the spoon. One, because I can't reach them. And two, I don't think it's making a lot of difference with this lake at the moment. They're just boshing around anyway. But I'm going quite far with this. <laughs> That's pretty much bang on where they've been showing, so I'm, not sh I'm pretty confident that will go again. God, that's a weight behind it, that bag. And talk talking to the uh, bailiff as well before he left, he said this, when he fishes this place, he'll put the rod out. If he hasn't had anything in 34 minutes or so, he'll redo it. So they're obviously used to casting. There's a lot of swims on this lake and it's not very big, so I guess the fish are going to be quite used to leads and things flying all over the place. I try and be discreet earlier with the first bite, but now I've got a, a bit of light between myself and Luke. I don't need to be quite as finesse. 
There we go. What's going up on the scales? Uh, eight pound two ounces. Eight pound two. Little scamp, but very, very welcome because also what this means is you're down to one rod. So this is where we actually get to see uh, these two fish in physical terms because you're down to one. He's very, very wriggly. Should have done all this during the fight, mate. There we go. Very, very welcome. And that came to the long range, well, I say long range, it's a one acre lake, but the rod that I flicked a bit further than uh, I had been, and this went off. So let's quickly slip you back, stick on another bag, which is already tied up, and see if we can wipe Luke out. Don't know where the camera is before uh, we even go to bed. Happy days. Luke. Luke, I'm in. You're going to have to come film. So I've just slipped back fish number two. And then again, Luke, you better be, uh, are you worried? <laughs> oh, it's a catfish. Oh, you're joking. I thought I was wiping you out there. Does that mean I get to put mine back out? No, this doesn't count to anything in the match. Oh, I thought I was about to wipe you out before bed. Oh, why did you have to like little corn? The bloke early was after catfish, he didn't have anything. Ugh. Oh, hello. Well, I've slipped the smaller one of the two back, but Luke insisted I filmed at least one of the catfish, just for the uh, comedic value of trying to hold one. <laughs> there you go, is that enough? Oh, he's behaving now. Get some stills as well. <laughs> I'm not getting stills. Oh, that would do. Back you go. Bizarre little creature. What's he reading then, Joe? Eight pound two. Eight pound two. So, uh, yeah, not the biggest one yet, but very welcome when it means that uh, I'm off the off the uh, the single rod kind of situation. So I get to put a second back out. That means, Joe, you've got to bring your third one. Well, your hypothetical. Huh? Theoretical third. Ver theoretical third one, so. Hypothetical, theoretical. Something ethical. I, th I think it's something like that. So, two rods each as we go into the night. It's uh, a little bit less squeaky bum time. Sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> there it is, quite a pretty little one. And Well, it's a little one, it's the biggest one of the uh, trip for me. But again, it's all about how many rods we've all got. And uh, this puts me back in the lead. Going into uh, the night properly with me on all both my rods out. So on three, or is it on two? Three. I'm getting confused myself. And uh, loop down to one. Slip this one back and see if I can uh, wipe them out completely before bed. I'm feeling confident. I've just remade another one of my bags and put it back out on the same spot. It can't have been out more than 30 seconds and it's gone off again. Another strange bite, another strange fight, and uh, at the very start of the fight, I could hear whatever I'd hooked slapping its tail on the surface out there. So uh, if I had to put money on it, I'd say this is another catfish, which could get rather tedious. It's just come up in the surface. I can actually quite catch it. Yep, another catfish. <sighs> and they aren't getting bigger either. But that's ridiculous, that was out I'd say 30 seconds. Yeah. I just sat down to tie up my next bag and it went off again. There it is. They're getting smaller. But they like the tiny, that's a six mil pop up in a bag. <sighs> that would be two minutes, 25 seconds. Uh, well, this is getting a bit ridiculous. I can't keep a rod in the water for more than about two minutes and it's just catfish central. This will be cat number six in about, and uh, it's come off, thankfully, probably a bit through the braid. I've been uh, trying to get away with the same rigs. They've been now uh, sort of gnawing away at the braid and the hook links. And yeah, sure enough, it's nibbled straight through. So that's two rigs down. That would have been the sixth catfish. Bit of a rethink. <laughs> Go on, you can do it. 
Give us a better bite for the camera. Or is that all you've got? I don't think they know they're hooked. Because he's not moving an inch. But that looks like catfish number seven to me. Hold on. That's not a catfish, that's a branch. Well, it's the middle of the night and camera's all away. Luke's in bed, probably. And uh, yeah, this is catfish bite number 12. So I think I'm going to uh, not bother putting the rod back out. Slip this back, obviously. Get a few hours sleep. Get up in the morning. And uh, hopefully these things are done feeding by the morning. Because at the moment, this is the only thing that seems to be awake. Well, this uh, 5 to 7. It's a very specific time, that is. But uh, it's just starting to get a bit lighter. Um, Luke's still in bed. But obviously I kept the rods in all night because I got inundated by catfish last night. So I'm hoping now the cats have switched off because it's starting to get light. And uh, I get two baits out and hopefully get another car up this morning and wrap this thing up nice and early. Because he's currently still only on the one rod. And I'm theoretically on all three that I've been fishing all night without any. So uh, it was a gamble and a fish just rolled. Just over there, and again. Get him on the phone. You'd have to take my, my camera's a bit busted. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna quickly get two rigs made up, two bags, fire one over there. We got some people turning up today in those swims opposite from about eight o'clock. So I've only got an hour to uh, sort of poach other water as it were. And again, right, let's quickly get some rigs made up and ping them out. Well, they may not look great. That's mainly because I ran out of the smaller bag size that I normally use. These are much bigger and because I was planning on using the spoon that didn't bother me but uh, obviously these fish are showing a bit further out some cast and these things will look basically like a small tennis ball. Not exactly aerodynamic. It's a bit like casting a deeper out but it didn't seem to matter last night when I was catching all the cats and the odd carp. So uh, yeah, that's going out there. And uh, tiny hook bait in the corner. You probably can't quite see it but the hook point is sticking out down there and uh, then it's filled with maggots and casters and a bit of pellet. So that's one ready to go. Just ready to tie up the other one, which is dangling there. Lost focus, but uh, tiny hook baits and very unattractive bags. But that's what's going on. Okay, so as I said, there's people coming on. Well, they're booked on from eight. Whether they get here at eight, I don't know. But in the swims directly opposite. So they're obviously going to fish out. But I've just seen fish show right over the far side and while they're not here i'm going to take the opportunity to fish for them now as like i said this is a very unpicturesque solid bag not aerodynamic so i'm gonna to have to give it a bit of welly it's probably going to hit the water pretty uh ungracefully but that is where fish have been showing <laughs> So it's stupid not to fish to him. And Luke is still in bed. He's terrible in the mornings at getting up. There's a bit of a breeze this morning pushing down that way, so it's actually a bit easier to get a line laid because the leaves have been blown aside. Yesterday was an absolute nightmare to get your line down. But now, because they're all getting blown away, I'm able to sink my line a lot better. I just hope now that the catfish have uh, switched off for the day because that was ridiculous last night. I think the quickest bite was 30 seconds until I had a catfish on the end. There we go, that's one. One sorted and the rain's just coming in. Perfect for solid bag fishing. <laughs> Sweet. That's a bit rude. Oh, you literally just came over. We've worked together, what, nearly three years? Mm. I've never known you'd be the first one up. <laughs> and that continues today. 
I see you still only got the one rod out, mate. Yeah. Nothing else. I had a cat. You had a cat? I had a cat at 1am. <laughs> Brilliant. I said I hope you get one at like 1 or 2am. Yeah, that happened. Sweet. Well, I've just got mine back out for the morning. Okay, well, I'm about to be wiped out then, aren't I? <laughs> we'll see. Mm. This is the face of effort, though, people. So I'm just going to knock up a couple of spares with the spare rigs that I've got, just in case Luke does get a uh, fluky carp before I get my, th my next one and wipe them out. So what I'm doing now is I'm still using the maggots and the casters and a bit of pellet in my bags, and, uh, but I'm just putting my hook in a slightly different way. Before I was putting it in and just trying to make sure it was covered by pellet. This way, I'm making sure my hook bait doesn't move at all on the cast or anything, not that it really should, but it completely eradicates any risk of hooking a maggot or a caster whilst in the bag. So I've just crunched my bag up like so, got my hook bait, push the hook right down into the corner, and then hook it so that the hook point is now sticking outside of the bag. So it was trapped down there, hook bait is still inside the bag, and that'll get masked by uh, whatever I put in the bottom, which is gonna be a bit of pellet. So let's put some pellet down there. So very similar to what I was doing yesterday, but this way it's just yeah, like I said, it's just given me all the confidence that there's nothing happening to my hook point on the cast. Just sort of push the pellet around down there, like so, perfect. So now my hook bait is just under there in the uh, pellet. When that dissolves, because it's a pop-up uh, corner or whatever I'm using, the little pop-ups, that should just work its way out from the pellet and sit in the corner. But my hook point is just out here, ready to go, not getting caught on anything else. So then I'm just going to put in some maggots. just for that sort of movement attraction. Let's pull my lead up a bit. Some casters. A stray leaf, just to put that in there. Again, pull the lead up a bit, so it's above all that. And then top off with a bit more pellet again. And I'll get myself hooked with a stray rig. Now, as I said, the, the pellet on the top, or whatever you want to use instead of maggots, is just so that when I squash the bag down, although I'm not making these aerodynamic, as you've just seen, it just eliminates any risk of popping a maggot at the top of the bag. And then pushing the lead into the centre of the bag so it flies somewhat accurately and straight. Pinching it down, again, not being stupidly aggressive with getting it tight. I do, just a little twist to hold it there. Tape. Hold that down. Wrap around. Two, three, four. Lick and stick back down. But yeah, normally if I if I knew I was going to be casting on this session, I would use the smaller bags, which are much more streamlined, as you've seen me use on previous videos. But uh, these are the bags I had, and a bit of a tight arse. I could have got some more from the tackle shop, but uh, these are doing the job for this sort of range. They may not look that pretty, but they're doing the job. Let's get rid of all that excess. It's starting to rain now, which is was forecast, unfortunately. Check that out there, because it will dissolve. And there we go. So as you can see, well hopefully you can see, hook point is completely clear of anything and the other side of that bag are maggots. So if that was inside the bag and I cast, maybe the lead slipped or the hook rig, the rig slipped slightly, I wouldn't be completely confident that my rig didn't pull into a maggot or something, but that eradicates any kind of risk. I will just tuck in the corners a little bit. So if you're going for any kind of range, of course, these wouldn't be the size or shape bags you'd go for. <laughs> Make sure not to lick the hook. There we go. All ready to go. So the lead's in the centre. Looks like dog, you know what, but it's been doing the business with the bites. The catfish certainly didn't mind last night, and the odd carp don't mind either. Little parcel of bait that they'll come across and we're good to go. I've got two more spare rigs down here to tie up, and then uh, I'm ready for the morning ahead.
little liner again. Got to be careful because some of the catfish bites started like that and they were really timid, as if they were bream. It wasn't anything. Right, two more to tie up. <sighs> Morning, Sleepy Beauty. Morning. Cool. Ooh, Bosh. That crash. That's not far off where I just cast my rods out to. Are you worried? Nah. <laughs> well, I took a bit of a gamble last night by not putting the rods back out. I'm not sure at what point I filmed saying that I'm not going to put them back out because I keep getting cats. But uh, I think I had 13 catfish bites in the end. Didn't land them all because some of them just cut through my supple braid. And it was in the space of about three hours, wasn't it? It was, it was... hectic. I think the quickest bite was about 30 seconds. And that's yeah. for the bag. I don't even think the bag can fully melt, but they were just engulfing it. Mm. So uh, I took a risk, got a good night's sleep, and I heard you had a bite in the night, which got me worried. Yeah, about quarter past one, my, uh, my right rods. A very funny little bite, similar to all the rest of what your bites were. And when I was paying it, I thought, oh, it might be, might be a carp, but popped up two massive barbels and just a big <laughs> smiley face looking at me. So it was definitely a catfish. So that uh, obviously didn't count, didn't, didn't get me uh, any salvation. So and nothing after that? Nothing after that, still on one rod. So obviously then I got up first thing this morning he doesn't snore, but I could tell he was still asleep because Luke never gets up for first night. I don't think I've ever seen you get up before me. So uh, <laughs> I quickly tied up some bags. I didn't do them last night because I thought if they're going to get damp overnight, I just kind of probably be casting out. Basically, I used Johnny of the PVA bag, which I didn't want to be doing. So I made up some bags this morning, pinged them out, and a fish has just showed whilst we've been filming this over one of the rods. So uh, I'm feeling quite confident this morning. Oh, I'm not. I think I think swim choice is, uh, has been a big factor in this so far because I feel like I'm quite hemmed into a corner. I very, very nearly went for this swim. And I know I've taken liberties with being cast over here, but if you were in this side, you would have done the I was same with say the you, showing. You know, you've had three quarters of the lake available to you, so if there's fish in front of you, you're going to fish for them, like you say, just, just like I would have done. But I don't know, I was quite confident when I first came in here and finding that little gravel spot at the start, like against that tree, it, it felt right mm -hmm. i still feel like something could happen we've just had three other anglers rock up on the island um and they haven't been the quietest when it comes to putting in pegs i think all three of them had mallets so if there's any fish around there they probably aren't there anymore and they have to go one way or the other so they might come around your way or they might go around my way who knows mm. yeah oh yeah there's still still a chance for a few more fish i think to to keep this going so yeah <sighs> coffee down watch the rods and hopefully I can wipe you up before you even have any breakfast and before the rain comes in. You panicking? A bit. I just made you your morning coffee and one's just belted off. It's coming in like a um, wet sock though. Not fighting at all. Now we've been told there's no bream in that in here. Surely not a double take. <laughs> it's a bream, he said there's no bream in here. Ah, <laughs> oh. or is that a tiny common? It's a tiny common! <laughs> this mate, I'm sorry, but that is you wiped out before breakfast for you. How does that make you feel? Oh. <laughs> That's the smallest fish I've caught all year, but the most poignant because you have lost. I tell you what, he may not be big, but he is Another cliche coming, perfection in miniature. <laughs> <laughs> miniature being the uh, optimum word there. Right, there we go. Take that leaf out so I don't get any extra ounces. What's he reading? It's reading two pound two ounces. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't care because that is a win for me. And let me just sort the macro lens. He didn't like that comment. <laughs> there we go, the Alan Blair. I can actually do it with this one. He is very, very pretty. How does it feel to lose to that, Luke? <laughs> I mean, he's very cool. He is very cool. He's very cool. So obviously the match is over, but we have kept the rods out just in case uh, we can get a bite whilst we're packing up. I've even let you stick your second one back out. Oh, I've put my second back out. Thanks, Joey. So accommodating. But yeah, congratulations, you won this one. So that makes it one all on cricket yeah. fishing. Well, this one it? was a bit more prolific on the fish front. It was very, very mild for November, so I think that's helped. But uh, give it a few more weeks if it cold gets a bit colder, I think the cats would switch off and then it would just have been carp getting caught. 
it would have been, yeah. The added a bit of drama last night. Every <laughs> yeah. bite you were thinking, oh, this is it, I'm going to be wiped out. And no, it was 13 cats on the bounce. <laughs> yeah, not ideal, not what we came for, but um, yeah, kept the, uh, kept the tension alive. It's been a lovely place to come. It's been very accommodating. It's a beautiful area with all the trees and everything around. Mm. So if this is a venue you like the look of, this is one of three lakes here, I believe. I think there might be more than that. I don't know. Well, anyway, there's this one which we've been on today, which is Lake One, I believe. Lake One, yeah. Makes sense, it's by the car park. There's another one over there. There's a match venue they've had matches on and stuff. So it's a bit of everyone, a and bit a for everyone here. Tackle shop on site as well. Yes. Uh, and, oh, a and a cafe. Toilet. And a cafe. <laughs> there's everything, everything here. So yeah, thanks again to Josh for letting us come down here. Uh, and yeah, if you want any more information, it's Pondwood Fisheries. So they've got a Facebook page of all the information and I think they've got a website as well. So yeah, make sure you check that out. But, and don't Oh, who's doing, who's doing what? I, what? But what were you about to say, but what? If you've enjoyed this sort of content... Oh, that's what I was about to do. Oh, go on, I'll let you have your moment. But if you enjoyed this sort of content, why did you start with but? Does it make sense? That's what threw me. Anyway, if you like this video, like it, uh, and subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell icon so don't miss any future uploads, and also follow us on all the social media platforms coming up on the bottom of the screen right now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. We'll get the hang of this eventually. I don't think we will.